Hey everybody, it's Rue Sims here and welcome back to my channel. So I have heard a lot of people talk about how bored they are with The Sims and gameplay and how The Sims 4 just like doesn't have enough to do and frankly there are times that I definitely feel that I like it's almost like burnout that I feel with my game even though I get so involved in my Sims and their lives I just feel like sometimes I'm just like repeating the same thing every single Sim day and it can be really really boring but I wanted to make a video to show you guys how I spice up my Sims gameplay to avoid feeling that way. Quick disclaimer, I do think there are a lot of improvements that could be made to the packs and, and just like the base game to add more options so players avoid feeling this way in general, but with what we are given, these are some of my tips and suggestions. So the first tip I have is to utilize the calendar. All my sims are going to work in school, right? When I'm trying to show something off, that's so typical. It is down here at the bottom left. And the calendar was first introduced in The Sims 4 Seasons, but it was added to the base game eventually. So every simmer has it. And basically when you click on the calendar, you get the calendar for the household and it has all the holidays, all the events, any work or school, any birthdays, all the stuff you get on the calendar. I was considering making a video video for tips and tricks that I use to fill up my calendar. It's not even as filled up as I usually have it, but to be honest, my main tip is simply to add events and add holidays. It doesn't even have to be a traditional holiday. For example, something that I do is I put vacations as holidays on the calendar just so I can keep track of it. So for example, um, Kiyoshi and Serena, my two main sims in my current household, if I wanted to have them have a honeymoon or just even take like a little getaway vacation, I would put that on the calendar for a day or for however many sim days as required. The reason that took so long to load is because I have a lot of custom icons, I think from all my mods. As an example, I would put in Kiyoshi plus Serena getaway, change the icon, and let's say we have to go on a vacation or travel. Let's say that they have to have romantic spirit because it is like Kiyoshi and Serena taking a break from like their jobs and the kids to just like re connect with each other like maybe if i know i want to take them to salani i'll add water fun you know it's just like little things like that and then it pops up on my calendar and it's great like to to keep track of things and it's also a forcing factor to make sure i'm doing things with my sims i also have aging off so i manually add in birthdays and everything to my game as well another thing that i think everybody should be using the calendar for is to actually plan events say you want to add a retirement party say you just want to have a dinner party invite your friends over take them all to a restaurant and game it just adds so much more depth to your game if you are interacting with more sims outside of your immediate household because very often when i start to just play with my household sims like I take care of their needs, I send them off to work, and then when they get back, I take care of their needs again, and then they go to sleep. Like, it's just a constant cycle, and if I fall into that cycle, I get I start to get really bored. But then if I break it up with a birthday party, or a pool party, or a dinner party here and there, like, it just makes my game so much more fun, especially because sometimes just like, when you bring different sims over, they act up so much and do the weirdest things. <laughs> Maybe a sim will flirt with another sim in front of you. It's an easy way to kind of add some more to the storytelling quick disclaimer though i know there's been an issue recently like i've also had the issue where sometimes sims are just like not getting the holiday to celebrate for some reason i genuinely don't know why it's happening at first i thought it was a bug with one of my mods but i think it's just an in-game bug also i will be linking down below a really great mod that i have in my game it adds a bunch more pre-made holidays and also makes changes to existing ones i know one of the pre-made holidays it adds is Winterfest Eve, which I love. If you guys can add mods to your game, I do highly recommend it. The next tip I want to suggest is to use aspirations. And I know that is very, very simple and maybe it might seem a little bit unnecessary to even say, but to be frank, like I have seen so many simmers, including myself, who just don't play with aspirations. But let me tell you, keeping aspirations in mind and actually trying to complete the goals towards the aspiration gives 
gives you different things to do i promise like if you are not somebody who naturally would for example go to mount komorebi and go down the bunny slope and do all the skiing stuff doing this aspiration is going to force you to do it but let's look at some of the base game aspirations i'm pretty sure public enemy is from the base game and like i very very rarely play with mean sims to be completely honest like i hate it when my sims are mean to people unless it's like part of an actual storyline i just i can't stand it i'm such a people pleaser both in real life and in the sims i like naturally do not gravitate towards doing stuff like this but having this aspiration is a forcing function to do something different and let me just suggest to you guys like because you can do multiple aspirations within one sims lifetime you can get so many reward traits i haven't done it in a while but there was a time where i did like almost every single aspiration in my game and my sims simology panel was like massive because the amount of aspiration reward traits that we had and it was great like they got so many skill boosts and stuff like that utilizing the aspirations is not only going to help you try out new things in gameplay but will actually help your sims in terms of like reward traits and stuff like that also i don't know if y'all are seeing how many times i've had to like try and take of this infant i swear the infants in this game sometimes make me want to rip my hair out <laughs> my next tip actually involves the gallery so i utilize the gallery a lot and if you guys don't know the way to access the gallery is right up here at the top right and basically what i suggest is place down new lots and sims as well from the gallery i did this at the start of playing this household like months and months ago when i first started playing with serena i placed down in addition to her a bunch of other sims i think something that can be really boring when you start a new save file is seeing the exact same sims like i'm sorry but nancy landgrab is so annoying to see sometimes Brittany cho because i have the get famous pack shows up everywhere bella goth i love her she's a queen but my god it can just be so irritating like i want something new and this was the way i tried to do it of course there are save files you can use and you can start your sim off in a save file many of which have completely custom lots completely custom sims i have done a whole bunch of save file reviews on my channel if you guys want to check some out if you don't want to like download a completely different save file what you can do is place down lots and sims from the gallery oh look it's madison so madison is actually a sim i placed down from the gallery we have madison christy juniper who are all from the gallery sandy is from the gallery liam i placed down a whole bunch of sims from there just because i wanted her frankly i wanted some drama and i wanted the drama with new sims in addition to sims there are some of the most beautiful lots ever on the gallery like let me just tell you guys it's insane it, i just went to most popular because i just wanted to show some off we have so many beautiful lots here a lot of them are residential but if you want like a restaurant if you have dine out just search restaurant <laughs> and you get so many i actually have a few that i've placed down in the save file i'm pretty sure i have this one you can also get cafes you can get like new parks there's this oasis springs park that i always plays down this one by carry it i love 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 this park remodel it is so good in my opinion but if you just want a little refresh of the community lots that you're going to go to the gallery place down some lots you will be happier trust me my next tip involves the story progression that was added to the game a couple years ago at this point. I will say up until that point, I used MC Command Center for story progression, and I still do really like the MC Command Center story progression. However, MC Command Center, because it is obviously an external mod, it can be really taxing and time consuming to set it up every time there's an update and stuff like that to get the story progression settings exactly how I want them. So the in-game story progression is a really good alternative and it can really spice up your game for example let me just show you guys so we were friends or i guess kiyoshi was not friends with shaban but serena was friends with shaban she actually had her in her friend group over here she was the sim right here there's now a slot empty but one day i go to her relationship panel and i see shaban is dead and i was like 
what on earth happened here? I was genuinely at a loss because I hadn't seen Siobhan in my game for ages. But when I checked in the neighborhood stories, which is what the story progression is called, I saw that she died from freezing to death. <laughs> Like literally, it said she turned it into an icicle. So the way you check what is going on in your neighborhood stories is you click on the mailbox and what you can do is check recent neighborhood stories. I will say, I think the UI for this could use some improvement to be frank. I don't like how it just shows one at a time. So for example, this person has died from rock climbing. Like what on earth? Somebody died from being electrocuted. <gasps> Wait, Rayanch died? Oh no, he died from overheating. Guys, Rayanch was actually in this story somewhat this is what i'm talking about like the wackiest stuff can happen so like i said before madison and her daughter was a family i placed from the gallery at the start of this lp and literally through neighborhood stories they have adopted so many dogs i don't even know why but they have adopted so many like they just keep adopting dogs this is a new dog i haven't seen before the way i incorporated this into my storyline is that madison is like a foster parent for dogs and i've actually had serena adopt two dogs now from madison's household even when wacky things like this happen there's ways that you can tell a story with it my next tip for you guys would be to experiment with different wacky aspects of the game so there are aspects of this game that frankly sometimes don't necessarily track with really realistic players and i am somebody who does gravitate towards more realistic generational family-based gameplay and so like i honestly don't always go for these things but you can take a rocket and get an alien baby i did this in one of my saves and it was honestly so fun and it was so funny to be honest to raise that little alien baby so that's just one example there's a lot of different things you can do with the base game or with different packs like different elements you can try to get a cow plant and have like a cow plant farm or something like that there's different wacky things you can do in this game that sometimes i also forget but they're really really funny and they're really fun and so one thing that i think can help with this is actually playing with challenges and stuff like that so now if you go into build mode and you click on venue info up at the top left then click this traits panel you get both lot traits you can also add challenges you can make your house cursed you can do mold this is from the for rent pack you can add wild foxes you can make it spooky simple living like this can add a lot of challenges to your game another challenge i have faced is that if i'm playing generationally i do sometimes get a little bit bored because sometimes i will end up kind of doing similar things in every generation like everybody just has a good life does well in school etc etc it can definitely be a little bit boring so one tip i have for you guys is to check out different legacy challenges and there are a whole bunch of legacy challenges that are out there for example off the top of my head there's not so berry i'm pretty sure that's a generational challenge there's the crybaby whims challenge i'm currently playing the ever after legacy challenge on my channel there are so many legacy challenges out there with different rules set for every generation and i think it can really help break you out of a rut and force you to do different things in your game for example in literally generation one of the legacy challenge i'm playing the ever after challenge i had to do the interior design career which i have not played with until playing this challenge even though i've had that pack since it came out and i honestly have really really enjoyed it so i'm gonna have a couple legacy challenges linked down below for you guys to check out but if none of those interest you you can do a quick google search and you will find a whole bunch more with that guys those are my tips to spice up your sims 4 game and really fall in love with the game again i do want to add a little bonus tip so one thing that i personally use to spice up my game are mods however i know that not everybody can download mods and i wanted this video to be as inclusive as possible so that is why this is just a bonus tip if you can download mods i have a whole bunch of videos on mods that i really like to enhance my gameplay on my channel including right now i have the education overhaul mod in my game i have the healthcare redux mod in my game i also have a lot of custom careers i have custom traits like i just have a whole bunch of mods that for me can enhance gameplay and add drama and also add some realism like for example i have wonderful whims which adds a menstrual system like 
I said, just a little bonus that I did want to mention um, if you can download mods. With that said, guys, I am going to go ahead and leave this video here. Definitely comment down below your thoughts or opinions or ideas or anything you want to say. I read all of my comments and I love it when you guys comment, so please do. I really do hope this video was useful and don't forget to like and subscribe if it was and I will see Rue later. Bye, guys.